You know, a short time after I came into God's church, uh, I remember sitting in services and I was listening to a uh, sermon and the topic was prayer. And I have to be honest, I don't remember a whole lot about that sermon. Uh, I do remember one thing that stuck out and um, probably I'll remember for the rest of my life. The, the minister shared a story of when he was counseling with a longtime member of God's church. And this longtime member uh, revealed that he hadn't had a personal, real personal prayer and he didn't know how long. It may have been months, but so the minister asked him, says, uh, uh, so what, what are your reasons? Why, why is this? He says, well, you know, I sometimes give prayers at services. Uh, uh, I still ask a blessing every time I have a meal. Um, I read the Bible. But, you know, lately I've been really busy. I've been kind of burnt out. Eh. Now, hopefully none of us here today can really relate to that, uh, to that story. Uh, but in some ways, I think all of us can. Each one of us in our own way kind of gets a little, little drug out and maybe our prayer life suffers. When we talk about prayer, we're talking about something very, very personal. I know my, my conversations, my communication with God is, is it's something I couldn't share. I won't share with anyone else. Uh, I, I talk to God and I tell God things I would never share even with my wife. It's very, very personal. I'm not going to share with you how to pray. I'm not going to share with you when to pray. I'm not going to share with you what position you need to be, how many times you need to pray. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the Bible, and we're going to look at a few things. Now, now I'm going to ask a question before we get started. And uh, I don't want an answer from anyone, but I want you to think about this. Think real quickly. How long since you've been baptized, and for those who are considering baptism, how long is the longest span of time you went without praying? Now, if that time period is less than 24 hours, yeah, you may want to still keep listening because there may be something in this message for you as well. But uh, we, we want to definitely point out that we never want to go more than a day w without communication to God. You know, it's... Uh, pretty obvious when we turn on the TV, we open a magazine, we, we open the newspaper, uh, drive down the street. This is not God's world. This is Satan's world. And Satan rules this world. And Satan is bombarding us every day with distractions, with stress. He wants us to be just so overwhelmed with, with the cares of this life and so burnt out that when we get home, man, all I want to do is go to bed. We don't have time to really communicate with God. I, wow, my brain is just drained. You know, so, so let's think about some of the reasons why a person might not pray. Um, I'm tired. Yeah, really, I don't know what to say. Uh, stress. Stress. Uh, you know, I just don't have the time to do it. Those were just a few things I came up with. I was going to jot down a list before, uh, before I came today and, and put it in my notes, but I didn't think that was necessary. I think we can all come up with reasons, or no, excuses, why we don't pray every day. Now, when you're talking about the topic of prayer, and Mr. McGee did a wonderful job of taking some of my scriptures from me during his Bible study today, Thank you, Mr. McGee. Let's turn over to start off with a Matthew, Matthew 6. When, when we talk about prayer, uh, Jesus Christ himself gives us some very quick clues, and it's an outline. It's an outline. And, and an outline, much like a coloring book, you know, it just has a bunch of lines around it, and we need to fill in the blanks. We need to make it colorful. We need to put the other ingredients there to make that butterfly colorful. And we'll get into that here in a few minutes. But let's start off in uh, Matthew 6, and I'm going to start in verse 5. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, so that they may be seen by men. 
truly I say to you, they have their reward. Now, we don't want to make a spectacle of, of what we do. Uh, we pray, we, we, uh, Mr. Ekema gave a very, very good opening prayer. Every week we have an opening prayer. I hope uh, most, if not all of us, ask a blessing on our meal whenever we have a meal. At the end of this service, we're going to have a closing prayer. That's not a spectacle. We're God's people. We're, we're not doing this to be seen. Truly I say to you, they have their rewards. Verse 6, But you, when you pray, enter into your room and shut the door. Pray to your Father in secret or in private. It's something personal, something private that we do. This is how we develop a one-to-one -one relationship with God. Now, now, Mr. Kramer, a couple of weeks ago, made a very good point of this Bible is God-breathed. Every word in it is God-breathed. This is God talking to us. When we get down on our knees or when we go into that private place, this is us talking to God. This is how we develop our relationship. I'm sure there's a lot of people, well, I read my Bible all the time, then I go to sleep. Did you pray? Or did you just let God talk to you? Because this is how God talks to you. When we pray, that's how we talk back and develop that that. Unified relationship with God. Verse 7. But when you pray, do not babble vain words as, nation, as the nations, for they think that their much speaking shall be heard. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows what things you have need of before you ask. Well, okay, there's another reason. Well, why, why am I going to pray to God when he... He already knows. I mean, he counts the hairs on my head. Why do I need to talk to God when he already knows everything there? He knows me better than anyone. He knows me better than myself. Well, of course God knows us. But we need to get down on our knees, and we need to, and it's not necessarily, some people can't get on their knees, you know, due to health reasons or whatever the situation may be. It's that personal relationship. Verse 9, therefore, pray in this way. And this is where we touch the first, uh, first commandment. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. We need, we need to approach God with reverence. We need to acknowledge that he is the one and only. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. That's spiritual bread and that's physical bread. Sustain us. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Mr. McGee touched this uh, during his Bible study today. How can we be protected from Satan if we're not asking for that protection? God gives us the armor we need, but we need to ask for it. He's not just going to give it to us because we show up at Sabbath services. He's not going to just give it to us because we, we read the Bible. To develop the relationship that God wants us to have with Him, we need to go to Him and we need to pray. I'll give you a good example. Uh, as, as we start approaching um, Passover, uh, I'm sure, sure a lot of us are already thinking about, you know, cleaning if we haven't already started. You know, cleaning out the cupboards, okay, here's this, here's that. Well, you know, my wife might accuse me of kicking me off the sofa while she does it, but we actually do it together. And, and if we don't have that, that bonded relationship, that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, He can't reveal to us those, those crumbs that are hidden in our lives, those spiritual crumbs that we don't see ourselves. We can't see all of our sins. And, and as Mr. McGee again pointed out, we can see everybody else's sins pretty good. But, but ours, sometimes they're just, they're just hidden from us. And the only way that we're really going to be able to see those is go to God and ask them to reveal those to us. So again, I wanted to point out that the, uh, the model prayer is, is an outline. So let's, uh, let's kind of pick up a crayon right now. Let's turn over to Luke 6. Let's turn over to Luke 6. 
And we're going to start in verse 27. Luke 6, starting in verse 27. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and here's where we get it, and pray, pray for those who spitefully use you. Wait a minute. Yeah, it didn't. It, it talked about forgiving those that were uh, that, that owe us. It didn't say about forgiving our enemies or anything in the model prayer. Here it says to pray for. Actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me make sure I get this correct. It, it says to forgive them. We forgive a person in our heart. We forgive a person in our mind. We forgive somebody by forgiving them. Here it says to pray. For, pray for those who spitefully use you. Well, when you pray for somebody, well, what are you going to pray for? Well, you might want to pray that their, their heart be softened. You might want to pray um, that, that God... Uh, we've got to be careful on how we do that. We've got to be careful on, on how we pray for those who use you. We want to make sure that we've got a humble heart when we do this. But we pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. And what else do we pray for? And I'm not going to ask you to turn to all, all these scriptures. Mark 13 and verses 32 and 33. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch, and pray. Tells us, watch and pray. Pray like tomorrow might be the last day, or in a couple hours it might be the last. Because we don't know. And continuing, 1 Thessalonians. I'm going to turn to 1 Thessalonians 5. Because this is actually a pretty, a pretty good indicator of what God expects from us. 1 Thessalonians, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. Starting in verse 16. Rejoice always. And notice the next few words. Pray without ceasing. Well, does that mean that, that we're walking around just mumbling to ourselves or kind of looking up and praying? No, it means don't stop praying. Make a point of praying. Make an effort. Schedule praying. Make time. For those who like titles, and I did title this, uh, this split today, very simple. Time to pray. Time to pray. That's something we need to make an effort to do. Making time to pray. And in Romans 12, verse 12, starting in verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Uh, that's usually when a lot of folks uh, may make a pretty concerted effort to pray is when things are going wrong. Continuing steadfast, or in other translations, instant in prayer. Distributing to the needs of the saint, given to hospitality. I want to touch on another scripture real quick. That's uh, Mark 13, Mark 13 and verse 18. Something we need to pray for. This, this is just another ingredient that we can add to that model prayer. And pray that your flight may not be in winter. Huh. When, when tribulation comes and it's time to, to head out, I personally don't want it to be cold. I don't like the cold. So pray that it's not in winter. Turn over to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. And we're going to start in verse 16. 
above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to which will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, the shield of faith. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always and pray, prayer with, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all persever perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We pray for each other. We pray for each other. So if you're ever lacking something to pray, you know, I really didn't have anything to repent of today. Uh, mm, don't really have anybody to pray for today. No, we pray for each other. Being watchful to this end and pers perseverance and supplication to all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me. Now this is being, being said by a minister of God. So, so listen to the words, these next few words. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We pray for the people who resent the messages, who speak the word of God. This is where it comes from. If, if the only communication, the only relationship we have with God is once a week, Listening to the messages that are shared here. Maybe occasionally picking up our Bible. Reading the words that God has provided to us. Uh, once in a while, maybe asking a blessing on our meal. If that is the, the scope of our relationship with God, we're missing the point. That's one-sided. That's God speaking to us. We need to let God know who we are. Yes, he already knows who we are. We need to talk to him. And we'll get into that here in a few more minutes. Now, when we're talking about prayer, it, it, it's fair to go to James, James 5. I'll turn over to James 5 real quick. James 5 and starting in verse 13. If anyone among you is suffering, let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing, sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And, praying, and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he commits a sin, he will be forgiven. But wait a minute, there's a contingent on that. There is a contingent on that. And if he commits a sin, he will be forgiven. If he asks for forgiveness and truly repents. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And this is the point of this whole set of, script, whole set of scriptures. The fervent... Prayer of a righteous man avails much. There's power in prayer. When we get down on our knees, uh, and Mr. Elliot pointed this out uh, just a few weeks ago, you know, we're not praying for a car or a house and for, for financial or physical success or physical uh, gain. We're praying to grow. We're praying to, to become closer to God and developing that relationship with God. We're, we're praying for others, for the success of others. Mark 11, starting in verse 22, So Jesus answered them and said, said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. <laughs> well, yeah. It's not a selfish prayer. Because the expectation here is we're not praying for selfish physical things. We're praying for others. 
Uh, we may be praying that we become closer to God. We may be praying that, that He increase His Spirit in us. We may be praying that, that He increase our wisdom. And I'll get into that again in just a moment. James 1. James 1, and I'm going to start in verse 5. If any of you, and this is another thing we need to ask for when we pray. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask. Let him pray to God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask or pray in faith. We can't be sitting here doubting ourselves. How do we gain faith? We ask for it. We ask for it without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. We need to be convicted and we need to have faith. We grow in faith by asking for it. In Philippians 4, in verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Does he just give that to you or do you ask for that strength? The only way you get that strength is to pray for it and have a relationship that you've established with our Creator God. Next set of scriptures is really going to point this out. In Colossians 1, I'm going to start, start in verse 9. Colossians 1 and verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask or pray that you may be filled with the knowledge of, of his, with, excuse me, <laughs> that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Again, we're not, praying we're not praying for ourselves. We're praying for others. We're praying for ourselves that we can also grow in the spirit, the knowledge, the understanding, and the wisdom. In verse 10, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful. This is how we grow in the fruits of the spirit, is we ask for Him to strengthen us. I want to read a short excerpt from the church's booklet, You Can Have Living Faith. And, and what's funny is I, I didn't, uh, didn't have this little piece of information until this morning and it just kind of you know, jumped out and slapped me across the face. The Vital Importance of Prayer, you can find this again in uh, You Can Have Living uh, Faith, starting on page 25. We begin our journey to living a life of faith by asking for it. It is His will that we all have faith. And He is willing to give it to us. And you can see that in Luke 11 and verse 9. And what I want to do is I want to start off there and read Luke 11, just so everyone, uh, it just referred to it in the article. Luke 11 and verse 9. So I say to you, ask, pray, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, or prays, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. If a son asks for bread from any, of, uh, from any father among you, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent instead of a fish? Verse 12. Or if he asks for an egg, will you offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The point is, how are we expected to grow? 
We're going to be stagnant if we're not on our knees. We should look at this as an opportunity, not a burden. I'm not saying anyone here looks at it as a burden, but we need to make that concerted effort. Uh, I've, got, I've got to do a little confession of my own. There's times I become tired, and, and I can't pray as often as I like. Uh, wow. We need to make an effort. Now, I want to continue in the article... We should pray to God for faith, and we should pray often for it. And they refer to Luke 18, verse 1. Pray, uh, prayer for faith should be an integral and regular part of our lives. Many scriptures show that we need to maintain daily contact, not occasional, but daily contact with God. And some confirming scriptures, uh, if you want to jot these down, are Matthew 6, 11, Luke 11, 3. 2 Corinthians 4.16 King David, to ensure a close relationship with God, prayed three times a day. And you can find that in, in Psalms 55, uh, verses 16 and 17. The prophet Daniel similarly prayed three times daily in Daniel 6.10. Prayer, along with study and and, and along with study of the scriptures, is a vital part of the conversation. And this is how we converse with God. He talks to us, and we talk to Him. It is a way of expressing our love as well as our concerns to Him. This heartfelt communication with God increases faith. Prayer also results in God responding to us. Notice this promise. You will find him if you seek him with all of your heart and all of your soul. And that's Deuteronomy 4.29. If we devote ourselves to earnest prayer and ask for faith, God will not refuse us. He wants to give us spiritual gifts just as a loving parent wants to feed a hungry child. Jesus promised that whatever we asked in his name, God would grant to us. But that doesn't mean I'm getting a new car, you're getting a new house, we're going to be able to pay off our mortgage. These are things that are worthy of God. These are spiritual things. These are asking that those around us are blessed. Praying for our enemies. It's amazing when you think about it how... Um, how loving and giving, how great, uh, graceful our God is. Brethren, if I haven't made the point yet, I hope I will. We need to make time to pray, and we need to pray daily. We can't pray occasionally. We need to make it a priority in our lives. We need to develop that one-on-one re that -on -one relationship with God and strengthen it. So I hope you all have a wonderful Sabbath as we start preparing again for, for the Passover.